Welcome to HQ Live, and thank you for joining us. I'm Vicki Hoth from Handy Quilter, and joining me today is Sarah, Sarah McNary. We'll get that right. <laughs> you are a member of the Andi Quilt Campaign. I am. And you have, when you came and did your presentation in Salt Lake, we were all just blown away with the information that you gave in a three minute period. And we thought it's time to bring you back to give all of our viewers some really important information on color theory. Yeah. So tell us how you got started. Well, um, like most of us, I started, you know, in school, um, studied, you know, color at college and uh, went on in interior design classes to study color and how it relates to everything related to interior design, mood and expression and form and function and all of those good things. But really, my explorations in color as far as they relate to quilting come from that continuum that we have with creativity where you start off by going to the quilt shop and you see that wonderful quilt and you're like, I want to make that, exactly that. So you buy the kit. And then the next time you make it, you think, well, I'd like that quilt, but I want a different color. And you get a little adventurous and you start exploring that. And maybe you get to the point where you design your own quilt and a whole new set of colors. But somewhere along that point, we want to make our own decisions about what's going to work. And that's where knowing a little bit of color theory can help us make quicker decisions and maybe better ones. So in other words, if I go into a quilt shop and I'm so afraid to put a quilt together and I buy the kit because, mm -hmm. the, because the quilt shop owner has done it for me, right. or I can say, this, there's a color line from a designer and I right. can just choose all of her colors. Mm -hmm. And that works too, yep. Uh, but I kind of like that one over there, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I can branch out. Right. You're going to give us that license yes. to be able to branch Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Artists have been working on these concepts for years and they've come up with some really quick, short, easy rules or theories that can be used in quilting too to help us get where we want to go. Okay, so yeah. color, we have some basic colors right. as we have here. So Right, these are our, kind of our starting points, right? Most of us are familiar from, you know, early grades with primary. The box primary. of crayons. Exactly, <laughs> you got it, the box of crayons. And so these are what we would call in our pure hues. And so we have our primary colors, right? Red, yellow, and blue. And then we have our secondary colors. And in a larger color wheel, we'd have tertiary colors and mixes of those. Tertiary colors? Tertiary. I know. Fun word, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh. Tertiary right, means three. Down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Three. Okay. Means three. Right. So what I did when I was working on this, and I was trying to remember some of the vocabulary that is nice to know when you're talking about colors, is I challenged myself. And I said, I am going to build a color wheel from fabric, not from paint, not from colored markers, and I'm going to do it without shopping. I'm going to do it in my own sewing room, in my own stash, and see if okay. I can make it happen. And it was hard. And I discovered, apparently, I'm a little color biased because there were some <laughs> big gaps. Um, but this is what I came up with. Okay. So this is the color wheel I made myself. And so you can see right off the bat, there's one that isn't quite right. Do you know which one it is? You got it. You're a pink? Yes. There's, there's, it's not really red, It's is not it? really red. That was as close as I could get in my stash. And even though I don't dislike red, right. apparently I don't quilt with it very often. Okay. So there isn't very much No Christmas and no Valentine quilts, yeah. huh? It or 4th of July, huh? It didn't seem to be, huh? Either that or all that fabric was gone by the time I did okay. this project. So then what I did, so I have my ring right here that is my pure hues. Those okay. are the Crayola colors right from the crayons. Then if you add white, so I made a little circle of white so I could remember, it turns into a color we call a tint. And those are all your Easter colors, if you, that helps people Pastel. to remember. Pastel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, if you think about tinting eggs mm -hmm. at Easter, mm -hmm. that might help to remember. And then if you go the opposite direction and you add gray, they make a color we call a tone. So this is a tone of green, and this is a tone of yellow, etc. Okay. And then if you add black, you get a shade. So a it's kind of, yeah, it's like what happens when twilight, you know, the lights get dark in the backyard. It makes look. so much sense mm -hmm. to exactly. shade that down. Yes. Right. So we've got tints, 
we've got tones, we've got shades, and then out here we have our browns. And browns and neutrals all contain an undertone of the color that they're related to. Can you see that? Yes. So, I can really, yes. Yeah. And so if you imagine the last time you were at a paint store or in the paint department, they were adding, they were taking white paint probably, and they were adding little drops of color. Well, those undertones are what those little drops of color are. So oh, if, you take, yes. if you take one of these and mm -hmm. add a different color, say let's go to my favorite colors here. Oh yeah. And this is where you're adding your whites, mm -hmm. and this is where you're adding your grays Absolutely. or your you're blacks. Black. You got it. Okay. Right. So you'll know how they make, mix your paint yes. by how many drops of white or how many. Absolutely. Okay. So back to the fabric. Mm -hmm. This is this is awesome. This is a great color wheel, and have you branched out now? From oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now you, that you know, you can yes, see where you're lacking. Yes, there is in my stash now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you caught me. Yes, there is, and it's a nice thing to challenge yourself to do. And even if you don't go to the trouble of actually stitching it down the way I did, I do challenge our viewers to go into your stash and try and build a color wheel and see what you have and see if you have some gaps that need to be filled. Right, yeah. right. So uh, I'm gonna bring this in. Oh yeah. Because if you don't wanna make the color wheel that Sarah has done, you can go to your local art shop or craft shop and find a color wheel, which they actually give you the gaps here or the in between. Tertiary colors. Tertiary see, colors. I love Thank that word. You. I love Thank that word. Thank you for that and talk about that, what yeah, happens here. This color wheel is kind of fun too because it's interactive and I love anything that moves. Mm -hmm. What they've done is they've shown us that if you add red to a color, this is what will be revealed. So in this case, adding red to green, anytime you add a, brown. a, a you get a brown, <laughs> right. And that happens with any color where you do its opposite. So it's direct complement, you'll get a brown version. If you add yellow here, you're gonna end up, if we push this over, you'll get a nice limey green. Next one over, if you add blue, the you aqua. get your lovely aqua, that's your favorite. If you add white, you get a tint, kind of a minty sea foam mm -hmm. sort of green. Going into my Easter eggs. Uh -huh. And if you add black, there's your shade. Right, really Yeah. Dark. And so they have on here too, they've got some values listed so you can see the intensity of color as it goes from light to dark. And then on the flip side, they give you all of the different color combinations, those little tricks that artists use right. so that we're gonna talk about. All right, yeah. well let's not steal your thunder oh, here. We'll come let's back to that though. Yeah, okay, I'll keep it right here for a minute. Sounds all good. All right, so what, what are, let's, let's get going okay. on this. Okay? okay, so let's put these to one side and let's talk about the first class that I teach in color theory and that is all about neutrals and how neutrals can work. So in this case, we've got some blacks and we've got some whites. And those are generally pretty easy for people. If they were gonna make a black and white quilt, they'd be pretty comfortable with it. So you consider a black a neutral? Black is a neutral, white is a neutral, and then all of those other neutrals have undertones. And that's where people end up getting stuck. So if we look at some of these colors, some of these little fabric swatches I've got here, some yeah. of them have an undertone that's very obvious and it might not play so well together. Especially when you put this one with that one. this one. So this one has no undertone, pure mm -hmm. white on white, mm -hmm. and this one has what color undertone? That has a yellow undertone. It sure does. And then if you bring this over, because that has a different undertone than this. It it's does. not a true white. Exactly. Different than this. And did you notice what you just did? You put two fabrics together to tell what was happening with it. And that's the trick. If you try and do it in isolation, it can be very hard to notice what the undertone is. But when you bring it to a true white, you can see something else is going mm -hmm. on. This by itself, or just with the black, you might think it's That's oh, a true white. perfectly white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a good, a a good trick there. to bring it next to another color. Even this one, you might think on its own that it is completely a gray, maybe a white tone. But this has got pink in it. It really does. And You've got a is, good eye. Yep. This is your gray, or even it could have a little blue, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and a good I way to totally tell is that. to bring in a blue and see if it reads next to it. Yeah, I don't think it does. You're not sure? Okay. What about a green? Do 
there's no right or wrong answer. And I wanted to mention It's what that. my eye sees, exactly. right? Exactly. You're absolutely right. We each have rods and cones in our eyes and they are a different amount and a different ratio for each human. So literally, not only do you and I have different opinions and different likes and dislikes, but we also absolutely see color differently. Okay, yeah. what do you see? I think it's closer to a blue than a green. Yeah, yeah. But another person could be absolutely right and disagree with us. An interesting thing that happens too. And it doesn't make them wrong either, does it? Doesn't it doesn't make them wrong. Nope. We're just using these tools to find ways to please ourselves or the people we're making our okay. quilts for. And you we're going to say another thing? I was just going to mention that our vision changes as we age. So the colors that are pleasing to children, as we age, we see them differently. And so some, you know, a quilter who's maybe in his or her 80s or 90s will see color differently than she did when she was in her 50s or so 60s. So with babies, they say black and white is high what contrast. they can see, that mm -hmm. high contrast. Yep. And then children love the primary colors, primary yeah, colors. those rich, saturated don't ones. we all love them? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But maybe we don't want them in our house. It might True. be hard to have, True. you know, a quilt that was like this on your bed. That might be too much. Yeah, I'd have really have to keep my eyes closed to be able to sleep. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. So All these right. are our neutrals. Mm -hmm. And these uh, make great quilts on their own, but they tend towards the modern, mm -hmm, if that's all do. that you're going to use. Okay. But they make lovely backgrounds, particularly if you want to highlight your quilting. Right? The lighter the background is, the more your quilting is going to show. That's true. So important consideration when you're planning That's how true. you're going to quilt. That's true. You're not going to see a lot of quilting on this one or this one. Very true. But even this, even though it's got some color, I think you could see the mm -hmm. quilting. Absolutely. Yeah. When you go into these kind of ones, oh, you'll see it all. Yeah. So that works yes. great. Yes. So okay. One, okay. Let's clear our neutrals off for a second. And let's go with another color concept, which is monochromatic. So mono meaning one, and chromatic meaning color. And so an easy Learned way. Learned lots of new words today. Yeah, I know, it's a vocabulary <laughs> class. Um, so one nice and easy way to make a beautiful quilt, particularly if there's a lot of piecing in it, is to vary your color, but only as far as the tint, tone, and shade goes. The one so, thread pump. Exactly. Okay. So we're sticking with one color. In this case, it would be violet. And we can choose, depending on the fabrics, you know, where we place them, how the piecing works, we can create that high contrast we want. If we didn't want any contrast, we might keep everything Very pale. neutral. Mm -hmm. That would be okay. a neutral quilt. Right. And these colors will function as neutrals in this quilt if perhaps we do some of this they'll fall into the right. background. Mm -hmm. yep. So that can be a really easy way for a person to find a lot of color without taking a lot of risks. Okay, but I'm a quilter, mm -hmm. I'm a piecer, but I really like my quilting to show. Yes. And so I don't want to take a quilt and just do those two mm -hmm. or two right. dark no neutrals. Right. Right. I want to add some light because that's where my quilting's going to show, not here. Exactly. So yep. I'm the quilter that will do this. And it's a really good idea to think about the quilting before you even start cutting fabric because yes. it will matter down the road. And unfortunately, I think a lot of us start with the pattern and we know what we want it to look like. We pick our fabric and by the time we get to the quilting, we're kind of tired. You know, we've used up all our creative energy. And then it's time to quilt, and we think, oh, gosh, I don't know. I don't know where to start. I just edge to edge and get it done. Exactly. But, but if but I if have if we some, think no, ahead, you want. this kind of fabric inspires you. And if you look even closely at this fabric, it's got some circles in it. And that tells me I want to do some bubbles. I want to maybe do some really fluffy round feathers. If this fabric was in there, too, I might decide this some was going to be, yeah, for a nice little stipple in the background. I might even choose some of these leaf shapes. Right. Yeah. Let the fabric give Let us Let the fabric cues. guide you from the very beginning. And then you're thinking about it as you're sewing. And when you get to the quilting part, it'll be exciting, not, oh, I've got to get it done. Right. And it's going to show. And it's going to show. But yes. if you're not a very good feather quilter, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. may be where you want to put your feathers. Oh, that's an excellent so point. So it kind of hides it until, it, you know, I'm going to get practiced totally up. That's, that's a right. great idea. I, I mean, love that. this will be my straight line. Absolutely. So, yeah. You know. Let the stuff you're good at show and 
but I could make a whole practice. quilt. This one mm -hmm. kind of stands out here mm -hmm. a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's got purple in it. It does. And so you think, oh, that just doesn't go with it. But I think if if it's ha you know handled sure. correctly, absolutely. And a lot of it depends on the pattern that we pick for the quilt. These I've you know brought these little squares in because they're easy to manipulate and for us to right. talk about. But generally speaking, they wouldn't necessarily be in equal amounts in a quilt. Correct. And that yes. can change the effect that they have. Well, I have a friend that says that you can take any piece of fabric and if you cut it small enough, it'll work in any quilt. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true. Yeah. I think that's true. Great. Well, let's go on to the next. This is considered the most harmonious because okay. obviously they're all the same color or colorway. The next one would be analogous. And so if we're thinking about our color wheel, come back to this for just a second. Analogous is going to be colors that are next to each other on that color wheel. Okay. So it could be two, it Yellow, could be three. Uh-huh. It could be, you could take it further. So not just one color next to each other, it could be the three here. Typically it's three, five, seven. So these three mm -hmm. here. Exactly. I see a lot, they're real popular right, right. now. Well, yes. and it's very harmonious. So if we look at these little... Oh, well, that's the colors you have, I too. do. <laughs> yes, you got it. So we've got a range of blues, and we've got a range of greens, and some that mix them together right. in the fabric themselves. And some are prints, some are batiks. You're seeing a lot of batiks today because they most often are ones that are solid colors. And so if we're gonna talk about color theory, they're great examples. And that's because that's what you like too. I do, <laughs> I do like batiks. Um, so you can see this is a very harmonious it range really of colors. And again, you can choose how much, you know, if you're going to just say take three of these, you know, this makes for a very strong, strong it contrast, does. but it still works. Mm -hmm. You could lessen the amount of yellow by showing a little thread on there, showing less of it, and that makes it a little more visually comfortable. But you could also use a less saturated version of it. So something pale mm -hmm. might be the answer. Depends on you, depends on yeah, the Yeah, I personally and think I would do the lesson of the yellow because mm -hmm. I thought, what about if we lessen the blue and mm -hmm. have more of the yellow? Oh, but I think, yeah. boy, that is a whoo, bright quilt. And, but maybe that's but what you're that's, looking for. That, that's right. Mm -hmm. And just add a little splash of blue in there. Yeah. So you're always safe in an analogous scheme. Okay. You have colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. You've probably heard of cool colors mm -hmm. and warm colors. Well, that's that color wheel right down the center. And so if you're picking all cool colors, those are colors that are next to each other. They're analogous. And so okay. they're very harmonious. And then if you want to do that little pop that we've talked about, then you're getting into the opposite side of the color wheel. And that's one of the reasons why there's such contrast. Okay. Yeah. All right. Analogous. All right. Analogous. I know more new words, huh? More there is no words. test. I want you to know. Thank you. There is no test. Not only does your color wheel have all of those things on it, but in addition, <gasps> um, Google analogous. knows all of these words I'm using. <laughs> and you Just can got to spell them right. <laughs> I don't even know if you have to do that these days. It'll Just spell it, it for you. Right. That is very true. Yeah. Okay. Siri. So, yeah. So I'm looking to see what she's going to do next. Next, we are going to do direct complement. So remember I was talking about those colors next to each other in a color wheel. And in this case, these are all blue. So these would exist on a color wheel together, but they would be so going in and out. Monochromatic. Good job. Look at you. And so the opposite side on the color wheel is orange, right? Right, right, right. If we look at it, yep. right if across we bring there. This here, we'll see right across. And so you'll see that's why a lot of football teams, a lot of marketing, that's right. they have those direct compliments because the highest contrast catches your eye the most. And it can be nice if it's all saturated like these, you know, it can be vibrant, but sometimes it's too much. And so again, you can reduce that by reducing the amount that is there okay. that's showing. So yeah. maybe these are just little circles or something in okay. this quilt if yes. we were building a quilt. But you could also find a fabric that contains that color but is itself reduced in intensity because maybe there's some background in it. Okay, okay. Yeah. And if we took that one and even gave it a little bit less. Mm -hmm. 
we'd still get that little, little pop. More. Yeah. So sometimes you'll find, um, and even in a kit that you've purchased, maybe they have every color in there and you love it, but that one pop, that one highlight is not your favorite color. You just don't care for it. Or maybe you're making it for somebody who uh -huh. hates that color. Well, the color will can come to your rescue. So you can look and see what is the direct complement of that, what would be a good choice. So let's stay over here. So here's our orange, mm -hmm. orange, and here's our blue. Right. But we can go, and I'm going to move this so that we actually see. I'm trying to trying to make this work. <laughs> Where's my orange? Oh, right here. It still wants to give me there. Okay, blue. Right, orange, those, are our, those are our so opposites. So anywhere in there, I could use, Absolutely. I don't have to use the pure hue. Exactly, hue. right, you can use any of those. But the other thing you can do, see what they have right on here, the split complement? That's another way that you can look at it. So if you had your orange, but you're like, nope, the blue's not gonna work, you could move to a blue violet or a blue green. See how the split complement right. works? It takes the direct complement, but then it goes to either side of it. So and so that can be a choice. These. Mm -hmm. Let's look at how that looks in fabric. All so right. Here, here's a split complement. I'm going to this out here. I'm liking it's, this. It's handy, huh? Yes. Yeah. So here's an example of that split complement. So you're doing it in the yellow. Mm hmm Okay, I'm going to try and get this, the yellow, okay. Mm -hmm. Then across is the violet. Right. Or and then the, so where are you? Oh, Are you sorry. doing yellow? Okay. Sorry. Let me get it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Got to turn this. So you have to get your, yep, your arrow to. You're going to be an expert. The yellow. Right. Then my split. Okay, so there's your yellow, and here's your red violet, and then here's blue. your blue violet. All right. So it works on the color wheel. Personally, I don't know that I could make a quilt out of that. That would be too much for me. Um, I tend to the you know more calmer tonal versions of things. So if we want to tone it down, then we come into absolutely. Oh, or yeah. so we could move into some different fabrics that are more tonally versions of those. And remember, these aren't really rules. These are inspiration points. So instead of in a fabric shop, you're there with a thousand bolts and you're like, gosh, I don't know where to start. Right. This gives you a little bit of a framework. It's not going to change that if you don't like these, you don't have to use them. Find something you do like, mm -hmm. something that does work. But if you're thinking, gosh, I'm just really stuck, I don't know where to start, yeah. maybe a split complement would be a place to find that pop of color. And so maybe this would work for you. Okay, what about that? Well, this is one where the fabric designer has done some of that combining they for, did us. It for us. I know. They are very, very good at that. And so you can see that these two colors, the blue isn't in there, but these two are very prevalent mm -hmm. in there. And even a little bit of this is kind of in right. the background there. So sometimes finding a fabric that has a mix of those colors gives you a good idea that it's already working. And so and this is a good place to that's start. That's what they, a lot of times, they'll say, find your basic, your... Focus fabric. Focus, thank yep. you. Focus mm -hmm. fabric, and then go off from there because it takes you either in, in exactly. one of those ways. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So that can help a lot. So let's say this split complement wasn't quite working. You can actually reverse the complement and do a double split complement. So it means we take these two and then these two. So let's look at what that would look like in and, and fabric. And that's called a double split? Yeah, and you don't have to memorize these. Uh, As I said, you've got not your, on my, it's, <laughs> it's not on not. my paper. I'm taking you, I'm, yeah, we're going oh, we're off going road now. Okay. We're going off I'm road. I'm gonna move this yep. aside then. Yep. So what this would look like is colors where direct complements would be opposite on the color wheel, but they are themselves to either side. So when you bring them together, you can create something that maybe is exactly what you were looking for, but maybe it's something you don't care for. And that's okay too. Yeah, and that may be, you know, some people are very bright brights. Mm -hmm. Some people are more, this is more of your traditional fabrics. Right. And so you just have to, you get to decide. Because right. you're the quilter and you're the queen of your quilts, right? Absolutely. Well, and I think one of the things that can be, well, let me think about it. So it's easy for me to make quilts that I like. 
and it's easy for me to make quilts that I'm going to put in my home. It's not easy to make quilts for people who have a different color palette preference than I do. Right. Then I get stuck. Then I'm thinking, oh gosh, really? I can't believe she likes those colors, but I love <laughs> her and I want to make her a quilt. Right. And then you're stuck. So that's when some of this can help. Or find someone who likes those colors and see what they like. And that can help too. Okay. All right. So Quilt we're for your people. For your people. And I wasn't going to say daughter-in-law, but sometimes it can be your daughter-in-law. Where you really love her and you want to make the most beautiful thing for her, but she likes different colors than right. you. Yep, then the pressure's it. on a little bit to perform. Do you take her to the fabric shop and say, pick out your own? Or you she could. doesn't have this color theory you enough could. to yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't take mine um, because she doesn't make quick decisions. Okay. She needs more time to think about it. And so, that, yeah. I, I probably would make those it's decisions day, without huh? her. Yeah, it's a whole <laughs> other, that's another show. Yeah. <laughs> Quilting for people different than for us. For daughter-in-laws. For daughter-in-laws. <laughs> I know. Oh, my goodness. All right. So these are another set of colors. These are opposite each other on the color wheel, but kind of like the radioactive symbol. So they're triadic, right? So red, white, uh, pardon me, red, yellow, and blue are triadic. These are also triadic. And so they can be, here, let me put this one in, equal intensity. They are very dynamic, yeah. a lot of energy in that. Um, and again, it can be a little uncomfortable. So changing the tone can help make them a little easier to look at, um, a little calmer, calm the palate a little okay. bit. This is some gray going in there. Mm -hmm, exactly. But you can also, again, find them in your prints. Yes. And so that can be a way, you know, if someone really loves purple but you don't, you know, maybe a fabric like that is not a problem for you because, okay. you know, it's flowers that are purple and that doesn't usually bother anybody. Okay. You know, when it's something within a print, it's yeah. a little easier sometimes than, you know, something that's totally throughout the entire fabric. So those are triadic schemes. Triadic. I think that was on here. I hope it was. Yep. Try oh, yeah. using three colors equally spaced from each other on the wheel. Right. And it'll right. be very um, dynamic. So okay. a lot of energy in that. So if your goal is for an art quilt, something that's going to hang in the living room, brighter colors, you know, might be more appropriate than what you would hang in a bedroom, perhaps. Oh, okay. Or a more calmer private uh -huh. area, depending mm -hmm. on you. Again, there's no real rules. There's just kind of guidelines that interior designers use when they pick art that um, quilters use when they make quilts. That's right. Yeah. So the last one is tetradic. And so that is... Um, that's a dinosaur, right? right? Yes, with four <laughs> legs. And that's okay. how we remember there's four colors right. involved. Yes. So, and it has that on your color wheel as well. It those does. Four colors. Tetradic. Yeah. Tetrad. And so these are some examples. Love it. Yeah, pretty fun, huh? So there's, they're equally distributed on the color wheel. Like I've got mine all mixed up here. So those are equidistant four on that color wheel. Okay. And again, we can change intensity depending on what we're trying to accomplish in our You finally got some quilt. red. I know, I did. I went shopping <laughs> after I discovered I was a little um, biased against it somehow. <laughs> and then again, sometimes you can find fabrics, like these are kind that of fun, that have all four colors in them. So artists, graphic designers, um, when they're making their fabric prints are also using these color concepts. Okay. So we can find them easily in those prints. I'm going to keep the color wheel oh, really yeah, close. Oh, yeah, it's handy. Yes. It's very handy. Yes. That really helps. And yes, go to your local uh, fabric store. I wonder, I bet you fabric stores have this. Do you Some think? Some of them do. I know that certainly those art stores do. Art and craft stores often have them, particularly in their painting department. Yeah. Yeah. That's Easy great. to pick up. Okay. All right. All right. What's next? This oh. is. Oh, well, there's one other thing that artists do. Well, that. You've mixed up all your. I know. I'll, there's no sorting, <laughs> no sorting those out for later, is there? There's one other thing that happens um, with fabric and the way that it's manufactured and the way that they dye fabrics. So, what they do when they make their dye runs is they have these little things called registration dots. Uh, or registration marks, okay. and they use these to make sure that not only is the die falling exactly where it should be, so that needs to be a circle, 
that's kind of a way you can tell if you've got a good die run too, is if these are off, you know that maybe it's not printed Shifted. perfectly. Yeah. And then the intensity of that dye needs to match these colors. But for us, it's a great way to figure out what's in a panel. So this particular panel is uh, one that I'm gonna make for my um, granddaughter. And so it's kind of a Tennessee version of Princess and the Pea. And you can see there's a lot of colors in here. So I could spend a lot of time with this panel walking around the bolts of fabric, trying to figure out which ones work. Mm -hmm. But another thing I could do is just come right to these registration marks and say, huh, if I know that this little girl, Olivia, loves purple, um, then what I can do. I've got my purple here. Yeah, I've got some purples there. And I can use my registration marks on a sample purple and see if I'm in the right color range. Now, I might not find exactly this lilac, and that's okay. I might just find something I that... I see that one and that one. Yes, exactly. And so as long as they're analogous and they go together and they feel like they're they're going to work, then chances are good that when I come over to those purples, it's going to go very nicely with them. Right. So in this case, I decided I was going to do a pinwheel border. Okay. And so I also wanted to use the green. Okay, let's so bring that back to our registration here. marks. And we can see that our greens are not perfect. These are different manufacturers, so the dyes will be different, but they're close enough mm -hmm. that I'm pretty comfortable that this green is gonna also work mixed in when it goes to make right. those pinwheels. And then that, there uh -huh. you go. And so I have a quilt that I think will work. Wow, that was yeah. an easy way to figure it out. Yep, a little bit of cheating, but uh, why not? They put them there, I think we should be able to that's use them. That's right take advantage of yeah. those. And you know, another thing that's really handy from a long arm standpoint is that these are a great way to say these are some thread colors that are already in this panel. So you can bring your thread, your mm -hmm. cones of thread, and preview with that. Exactly, exactly. I don't have to be thinking, oh my gosh, what do I do? I can go right but to these. But a tip on that mm -hmm. is we're not gonna just take a cone of thread and just put it down there no. and say, oh. We're going to string that out and even Absolutely. string it out up here. Exactly. So that and we see can, how it'll look. Yeah. Quilted. Yeah. Yes. Great. That's a good tip. That's good to good to know. Good. Yeah. All right. Okay. So what else have you? Oh my gosh, this is just a wealth of information. Here. Good. Oh, I'm so glad. What? Um, what else have you got to show us, Sarah? You have this quilt that you were talking to me earlier about. Tell me what, why you made this quilt. This is a sample, this is a little table. Yeah, yeah this was kind of a challenge. So um, when I first started studying color theory as it relates to quilting specifically, there were a group of four of us and we decided to challenge ourselves that we would meet every week for 12 weeks and each week we were going to demonstrate with our quilting in some capacity, whether we're making a placemat or in this case, this is a table runner slash coaster for my end table, um, that was going to demonstrate those color concepts. And in this particular one, the week was analogous. So okay. those were the, do you remember what so that was? So if we remember yeah. analogous, uh -huh. it is using colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. Exactly. So we've got our yellow and we've got our green and we've got our blue. So those are next to each other on okay. the color wheel. So and in addition to yep, there you go. In addition yellow, to green, blue. Perfect. I wanted to day. yellow, green, blue. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So those are next to each other in the color wheel. So the overall effect of it is pretty calming. Mm -hmm. It's it is. pretty harmonious. And I use different shades, um, different tones, but still staying within that color palette. Right. And so another aspect of this that I wanted to include um, was this idea of depth and dimension. So my goal was to make these pairs look more real, more three-dimensional, mm -hmm. when in fact, obviously, they're flat. And so to do that, I cheated in a couple of ways. One was to use a shadow box or attic window style mm -hmm. of piecing. So that, that works. Yeah, it does. And then using a slightly darker um, tone of blue than here allowed me to focus where I 
was showing the this light was coming. Uh -huh. Exactly. And then creating this little shadow so. behind it and emphasizing that with my quilting by pushing that fabric down. So that's really cool because that's thread, mm -hmm. not a piece of fabric right. behind it. Right, yep. And you can do that with thread right. when you're quilting. And then I also used a little design juxtaposition as well. So I've got these straight lines, kind of emphasizing that this would be a man-made board, if mm -hmm. you would, to make that window. But then when we get out into this area, it's kind of like the sky, the air, the wind, and it's all very circular. And likewise, these little highlighted places on the pairs are also very organic, very circular. And even in these little window panes, if you will, that to separate, right. I tried to juxtapose or balance those two design elements with, you know, these are very straight lines, um, but then doing my little pebbles in them. So you did a little painting in here. Yes. To uh -huh. get the highlights. Exactly. Yep. And you were very careful because the sh the light's coming from this direction, mm -hmm. and so your shadow is always there. You know, I could see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're a little child, that you could put it in different. Oh yeah. Well, and when you're a little adult, you can too. Trust me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And that's why everyone needs a design wall and a friend who will come and check your work before you sew it all together. And so, tell me about how you do that with your friends. Oh well. Um, in a bunch of different ways. I'm very lucky in my town there's two guilds and so I belong to both of them. And we also have little sewing groups within them. Mm -hmm. And so those women are wonderful. We get together, we have a great time, we have retreats, we do all of that. But we also text each other. So when you're at home, it's Sunday night, you're quilting, you know, the dishes are running in the dishwasher and you just can't decide if what you're doing is gonna work. Right. Grab a couple pictures on your cell phone, text it out to your girlfriends, and you will get instant answers with good feedback. And the best part about knowing quilters is not only do they have great feedback, but they can tell you why they think what they think. Oh, that's good. And that really helps you make a good decision. That's good, because we all see it different, like you say. We certainly do. And so with that great feedback, do you see the four that you work together, do you see a uh, contrast from one side of the... Oh, absolutely. We could not be more different in the kinds of colors we like, in the kinds of quilts we make. One of them is a hand quilter only. Okay. Um, you know, we are very, very different, and that makes it so special. But it doesn't make anyone wrong, does it? Oh, never. Nope. That's the thing that I love about, there are so many fabrics on the market that, that someone will love all of them. Absolutely. If, they sell. Oh and yeah, absolutely. I like, I like something that you may not. Although our color palette is a lot <laughs> alike, I think. But uh, there are some busy, busy, busy prints that right. that are just you know I love. I gotta have. I gotta have. And I'm gonna put them all together in one quilt. But for me, there's no quilting that's gonna show. Right. But for someone else, they're great because their quilting may not be as Right. They're not there yet, and they don't want to share it in its entirety. Right, yeah. right. Well, this is a great example of a lot of things, of light on a quilt, of the color, the ana, ana, what, what's it called? Analogous. Analogous, thank you, We're just see. friendly colors, we can friendly call them, because they're, okay. they're next to each okay. other. Yeah, All right. Friends. All right, Sarah, I, I see you have some thread here. I do, what, I do. When you preview thread on fabric, Show us how you do that. Well, I'll show you how I used to do it and how I learned to change my ways. So I used to do this, right? I just bought this. Mm. Will it work? Will it work? Will it work? But the reality is this is the saturation of that color. Unless I was going to do thread painting where it would be this much thread right. all next to each other, that's like really... Right here. Right. This is really not the way to do it. So take take the off the plastic. Let that go if it'll let you go. Sometimes in the winter, the static, it won't let you go. And then, hand it to your friend <laughs> who can see. Oh dear, we're gonna and, find uh, the end of it. There we go. Oh, oh. good job. Nicely done. Ooh. I could not see that. And you wanna just lay it out in the way that you're going to use it when you quilt. So, so we're gonna puddle this. Exactly. And some people like to call this auditioning thread. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a terrific description. So here it's not gonna show. So if mm -hmm. I wanted to use this, mm -hmm. that would really look 
grade on here. Absolutely. On here, it's going to show. So I'd have to make a decision about whether or not I wanted it to show. If I'm just trying for texture, I want something that's going to vanish. If I'm trying to do thread painting, then I want something that's so going to show. And you may use different thread exactly. colors. Exactly. You may change exactly. that thread. Okay. Yep. And sometimes you'll end up in the situation, um, I will admit there are times when I am lazy. And that means I don't want to change thread color. Okay. I just want to quilt this quilt the whole way I'm there. through. I, got, I understand. Exactly. Don't, ex don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and there are some colors that do that pretty well. And that's one of them. That olive green and this gold have the ability Gold, on, wait a minute. I know, it's crazy. It's kind of like greenish, doesn't it's, it? Well, if I yeah, was separating those, cool. I would say it's gold. Cool. But we can, yeah. you know, say okay. whatever the manufacturer name is, probably 472, which means nothing to anybody. Um, <laughs> which was not the right number, by the way. She can't see. I can't see. Without see. glasses. Oh, yeah. okay. I can see. And what's the number? 653. 653. Universal. And it's bottom line. There you go. Oh, look at this. And look how nicely it but does. But it's a finer thread. It is. This is a 60 weight, and I think this is probably about a, a 50 weight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not much difference. Not much, right. but... So as I pedal out across there... You almost can't see it. So it's kind of a universal yeah. neutral. It's like a chameleon thread. It picks up the color yep. of mm -hmm. the color that it's going over. Exactly. So if... Who would have thought? I know. And it performs, it's a hardier performer than a monofilament. Monofilament will work, but it's not always the right thread choice for the quilt where it's going to end up or, or maybe even just for what you like. Right. But this one, in either the olive green or in the gold, will work very nicely when you don't know what to do or right. you just want to be done. I've heard that this color is really really nice on yeah. lots of quilts that you would not expect. Yep, it, it is surprising. Okay. And it works really well in prints. You know, like these are, we've got all plain right. colors here, um, but on the prints it works really well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see you've got some other I do. Threads. Do we have a little scrap of fabric we can test this on? I mean, we can do it on, on this, but I think Go we ahead. had a little. Did I, did I move it? Um, I think it may be. It. So sometimes variegated threads can be your friend, and sometimes they can deliver some unexpected surprises. So this it's looks. beautiful. It is. It's like a peacock, beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful. But when we actually get out there and we put it on our fabric, and if I was going to do some feathers here, you notice that it kind of does a I lost part act. of the feather. Yep. Yeah. And so if that's the look you're looking for, great. This thread will work. But if I really want to see the definition of my thread work and mm -hmm. my feathers, then I would want to pick a variegation that doesn't include my yes. fabric color. Yep. And then you'll get all of the fun of the color without the disappearing act. And that's an interesting theory because you would think I'm going to pick it to match and yep. yet you lose, pick it to you contrast. lose part of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so do exactly. you have another thread there? Well, we could try this one. I think this has got a little blue in it, but we can see what would happen. One thing I also um, recommend is that people try out their audition, not just you know a clump unless you're going right. to do a clump, but if you're going to do straight lines, go ahead and lay it out in straight lines and see if you like how that looks. If you're going to do a big loopy feather, you know, go ahead and try making you know an approximation of a big loopy feather and see if you like how it how it plays. Right. I really like that. Yeah, I think it's working. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and it doesn't disappear entirely. You can keep track of it right. as it goes. And it's a heavier. Th well, I don't know that it's even heavier thread. I think that the same way. Just the way. colorway. Yeah. Just the yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. See, you have some white over I there. I do have some white. Sometimes people think that. You know, white is often a neutral, black is a neutral in mm -hmm. our wardrobe dressing. So right. if I have a really pretty sweater and I want to highlight it, I might choose, you know, a white shirt underneath. Mm -hmm. And that would go. And we accept that. But sometimes white is unforgiving when it comes to how it performs on a colored fabric. So it, if your quilting is perfect or if you own a pro stitcher, this will work for you. If not, you might want to look towards some of these other Something thread Something that's options. more blendable. Uh-huh, a little more forgiving. Even if we went with a lighter color here. Absolutely. And that or, might read as white. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. That normally will read as white because mm -hmm. of the darker, so you might want to go more of the darker color in there. 
Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to take this away. Okay. And how does white read here? Does it blend enough that if you said, I'm just going to put white on this, it, it's doable. Yep. But yep. I really like the color, the thread color that you chose. Right. And it kind of performs that direction. Is this the same thread color here as well? In the blues and it here? is. Uh -huh. It's not in the... Right. In yeah. the yellow. Mm -hmm. Or even in the green. I've seen right. chosen the green. Wow. Thread color is just as important as fabric, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes. part of the fun. Right? Once we know these concepts of color, we can apply them to thread as well. And there are a lot of gray threads that mm -hmm. do the same thing that these two thread Absolutely colors do, are. is that you can yep. use them. Mm -hmm. Just being careful, though, on your blacks, your grays, because they will, a light gray will read as a white. Very true. And so. some of those grays have undertones, which we learned about earlier. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to move this aside, okay. and then we have a really fun quilt. Oh, okay. yeah. Be yeah. right back. Sarah, you have this beautiful quilt, and Thank there you. is a reason for this quilt. Yes, yes. So I designed this quilt as part of a color theory class that we're teaching, and it's all about infusing color concepts into a specific quilt design, also while learning a new kind of quilting. Um, and so it's a row quilt, and so we'll see if you recognize these concepts. Let's move it this way. Okay. A little test for you. I told you okay. there was no test. Oh. Here's the test. There. I was oh, lying. going to whisper in my ear I will. If I, can't I will. So this is it's the first. neutrals. Good job. Yes. Passed. You're passing. You're doing great. <laughs> yes. So this was our neutrals. So within the class, I used black and white, but of course you can use any neutrals, and you can choose whether or not you want to have high contrast or low contrast. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So then the next thing we talked about was the monochromatic. Can you tell which one that would be? Right here. Good job. Yeah. So our flying geese are all... Love them. Yeah. All monochromatic. And so they're all in a blue colorway. Just while we're here. Yeah. This is awesome the way you quilted it because oh, those geese you. are really popping. There's just enough there that mm -hmm. you probably used two layers of batting. I did. Good call. That's, yes. the, that's the secret to really making your quilting show. So I have a layer of the 80-20 and then I have a layer of wool. wool. Uh -huh. And so it's a little more challenging because it's puffy when you're quilting. So you kind of, you know, to get those straight lines, you really have to use your rulers more. And stitch uh, in the ditch. And stitch in the ditch. Lots of stitching in the ditch. Right. But then when it's time to do your feather, they just really pop out. And these are so fun for my granddaughters, you know, oh, to touch me. them and feel. I know, <laughs> I'm the same way. My husband was like that. He was touching these. I'm like, yeah. hey, that's white. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next All one right. was the... Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Monochrom they all start to go together, right? Yeah, the analogous, right? Analogous. So we had our monochromatic. So we're going to move up here. So in this French braid, we have our colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Okay. And I was kind of trying to double dip on this particular row when I designed it. I also wanted to include the concept of transparency. So the idea that a light color and a dark color could overlay each other and turn into a medium value color. Right. And so that's what I was doing That is well. great. Yeah. Quilting it's, is awesome in that too. Absolutely. And if you're trying to do one of those, you know, one block wonder where it looks like the city of blocks is laying on itself, uh -huh. that's when you really want to pay attention to transparency, value, and how a single color can turn into other colors depending right. on how light And it totally it. does that. Yeah. So kind of fun. Okay. So then our next thing was direct complement. So here, good job. Good job. You're doing very well. You're getting 100% on this. Yeah, <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Um, and so in this case, we've got our violets, and I've got two different shades of violet. Mm -hmm. And then can you tell that I have, what? so I have a yellow. Yeah, you your blue. And this oh. is more of a, can you tell that this looks a little bit more green? Yes, As an I undertone? Can. It's super subtle. Very. And on its own, you would never notice it, but if you bring your eyes over to the more kind of creamier, truer yellow, mm -hmm. you can start to see that green totally undertone. Totally see that. So this is something I wanted my students to be aware of, that you can pick a yellow and think all is well, but then somehow it doesn't seem to work. And if you can bring another yellow near it, you might discover that really it has a green undertone that you didn't want. Okay. Or maybe it's 
to buttery and you really needed that green. That so, very, yes. Yeah, so comparing those colors next to each other can really help. Yes, Yeah. I see that. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but when you look mm -hmm. for it, you'll find it. Okay. And so our next one is our split complement. Remember we talked about that direct complement? Mm -hmm. So this one is where we split. So we've got our yellow, and then this is gonna stand for red, really, kind of okay. this red. Okay. And this then is this is our purple, yeah. And so, again, in this one, one of the things I wanted to highlight is the amount of saturation and the amount of fabric that takes up. Yellow can be a really challenging yes. color. And if you had seen this quilt before it was quilted, this yellow, you could see it from outer space. I mean, it was Really? Puffy. Because it's so muted. It looks that way now, but honestly, I should have taken a picture. It did not. Wow. It was like the star of the quilt overshadowing absolutely oh, wow. everything. But once I started to quilt it, it took on a little more definition and that also helped tone it down. So you can do that with your quilting too, is you can draw attention and you can also remove hmm. attention from it. So that was kind of a, a relief. And that was done just by the quilting. Yes, Who just by the quilting. Who would have known that though? Yep, yep. Definitely, well, good quilters know it. Those yeah. really good ones, you know, when you have a problem quilt and uh -huh. you send it to that lady who's super talented. That would be you. Oh, <laughs> you're sweet to say. Um, but they know those things. They, they can fix a lot of things. That's with right. Their that's right. All right. Okay. So on to our triadic. Good job. Oh, we skipped over this. I went too far. Uh oh, so let's come back. These are some complex complements. Okay. And so they're like direct complements. So we would have our blue and our purple. But in this case, I wanted to kind of highlight the idea that they don't always have to be directly opposite each other. So here they are in this one, but here I've taken the orange and I've taken the yellow and placed them in different flowers. Mm -hmm. So within this row, I'm still using that color concept, but I'm not trapped into doing them next to each other. And we accept a lot of color saturation and contrast in a flower. So right. just the nature of the fact that this piecing is a flower makes it a little easier than something that might be just a regular mm -hmm. piecing block. I like the way you have taken the fabrics, even though this is a row quilt and you've got a different theme on each one of them, mm -hmm. you have combined fabrics here, mm -hmm. here, all the way through right. so that it ties it all together as a quilt. Exactly, and that's a, an important concept too. When we see that repetition in color, in design, in the fact that there's feathers here and there's feathers in other places, right? all of that helps create balance and people become... Balance, it, that's another one. Yeah, and it becomes a more um, comfortable quilt. Right. I mean, it can be very exciting to see a lot of difference, um, but sometimes it's overwhelming. Why did you choose to this color, your turquoise mm -hmm. yellow, through, to be the, the main color throughout it? Did you feel that that brought it all together? Nope. It's my favorite. Oh, see, it's that's my what favorite. I yep. I, and that actually created quite a problem for me because starting with that color as my favorite meant that all the other colors had to play nicely. And so if I had chosen a white, I could have gone any direction with those color concepts, but I didn't want to. I really wanted this right. color. I fell in love with it right when it came into the shop and I bought yards and yards <laughs> and yards of it. And I'm like, oh, I just have to use it because it's beautiful. This quilt will, when it's done being in class um, and being used as a teaching sample, will hang in my sewing room. So Because it's good. That's my favorite, yeah. Okay, I think this is our last one. Close to it, okay. this is our second to last one. Okay. So this is gonna be our triadic scheme. So here we have literally, yep, yellow, red, and blue. So your primary colors, only I've taken liberties with them right. by using different tints and different tones and shades mm -hmm. for them to make something really that well. worked nicely, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, All last right. one. All right, we're gonna. Do you remember the last word? It was your dinosaur. Oh, try. Te. Te. Te tetratic. Te tetratic. I know it's a lot to learn. The dinosaur. Yeah, the dinosaur. And like, think about the stegosaurus. Right. See, it's kind of like uh -huh. that. Yeah, okay. that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> so we have four colors here as well. So we've got the blue and the violet, and then we have our orange and our yellow as well. And then with this, um, you know, part of the class 
is that they're learning different um, techniques. And so this one, you know, is also a Dresden plate like the last mm -hmm. one, but with a pointed end. And so a different construction technique right. for it. And then I just had so much fun with the geometry of these that I wanted to continue it right. into the quilting. But again, use that juxtaposition of, And you look know, how you tied it into the next one. Yeah. Right. This is an amazing quilt. And so your students are doing the same thing. They're That's doing right. the row by row. In their own colorways. Where, where yeah. are you at? It's We're in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. So a small area. Yep. So people can come and sure. take the classes. This is wonderful. I love, love, love the what you've done. Your quilting is amazing, but the color theory and helping us be a better quilter, a better choosing, you know, choosing fabric. And maybe the word is be more better. successful. Maybe the word's more confident. So I think the first thing I would do after this class mm -hmm. is I would go out and buy a color chart. Awesome. The color wheel. There you go. There and then I would watch this video, watch this uh -huh. over and over again. And make your own from your stash. Right. Do a stash stash. Right. I'm excited yes. to go home and, and make that color yeah. wheel that you made. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, this you're has been welcome. so Thank much. You, for having you know, me. we a lot of times talk about the quilting quilting, but getting that started with the fabrics and being yeah. more confident and be able to we like a fabric well what do I do with it mm -hmm. you know and it's wonderful thank you yeah. so much for being here today oh, you're welcome thank you for having me it's been a lot of and fun and thank you for joining us today and join us again on another HQ live now remember subscribe to us on our YouTube channel and you will get notifications of all of our uh, videos and different things that we do so see you next time